How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. on Saturdays with Jim Valley, and Sundays, 6 p.m. Eastern with me. Merry Christmas, everybody. It's Christmas here. We're doing a Christmas episode here. Everything is going to be Christmas-based. We're going to talk about all the Santa appearances on, on wrestling, uh, all the elf appearances. No, no, no. We're going to talk about some of the best stuff that happened this year. All the positive stuff. Next week, we'll talk about the terrible stuff. I know some of you guys want to talk about the terrible stuff. We're going to talk about the positive here today. Uh, wild year, man. A wild, wild year for professional wrestling. Uh, definitely an instrumental year. You know, Dave Meltzer does these, uh, you know, he's been releasing these yearbooks. 1995 came out recently, which I want to talk to uh, Matt about this. But 2002, going down is one of those years. A lot of changes. Vince McMahon leaving, Cody leaving, AEW, uh, people leaving companies, CM Punk's melting down, <laughs> I guess. I don't know what you would call it. Uh, a lot of a lot of changes in professional wrestling. But we're going to talk about all the positives here and all the cool stuff that we got to see and what we look forward to next year in professional wrestling. It's a lot of changes, guys. I had a very interesting meeting last week with somebody. And I think this is going to be a very big year, year for professional wrestling as far as both companies go. I would not be surprised if they both have fantastic, fantastic years. But I want to hear from you guys. Tweet me and let me know what were the best episodes that you remember for both Raw and Raw, you know, Raw SmackDown, AEW, all of it. Best performances, best promo, best everything. I want to hear from you guys. When we come back from break, we're going right into this. I'm going to be joined by Matt Ryan here on a Christmas episode of Wrestling Observer Live. We'll be right back after this. Wrestling Observer Live, Andrew Zarian here, joined by Matt Ryan. Matt, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Feliz Navidad. Happy Hanukkah. Merry Kwanzaa. Uh, and a joyous Festivus to us all. A joyous Festivus. You know where Festivus was invented, right? It was uh, in a uh, department store. In Bayside, Queens. Festivus mm -hmm. was invented in Bayside, Queens, and they drove the Costanzas right out of town into Middle Village. <laughs> I have a Festivus pull right outside. My whole family's here. We're all drunk on eggnog right now. Everybody, every, I mean, you have to see what's going on out, out, out here. You know, thank God my studio is, is soundproof. But there's a big party happening here at the house. But I, you know what? Can I, it's can I explain what I think is going on in this yeah. Aryan home? Yeah, yeah, right tell me, tell me. Yeah. Outside, it's Slam Jam Volume 1 and 2 <laughs> playing on vinyl. Intern Deacon has broken in through the window, dressed up as a Santa Ninja. So it's just a ninja outfit with a white pom-pom and it's all red. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. And I think your children and your dog are engaging in Muay Thai fights. Am yeah. I off base? No, no, no. Aunt Lisa's refing the whole thing. <laughs> Nan and Poppy, Nan and Poppy are, are, are just, they're judges and Aunt Lisa's the referee. <laughs> My mother-in-law is standing there in the corner. It's a whole scene. You have no idea. We're running a fight club here. That This is the best Christmas ever. I'm just going to tell you. This is the best Christmas. Oh. But, you know, man, a lot. It was a wild year. First of all, thank you so much for joining me this year. This was fun. Thank I had a you. blast. This is the last show of the year, guys. I, I know. I, it's the last time I can say go to streamcatalystwrestling.com or get tickets for Catalyst Wrestling's Rock the Bell House at tinyurl.com slash rock the bell house. Uh, when is that show? That is January 22nd, Sunday afternoon, 4 p.m. The show will be done for you just in time to listen to the Sunday edition of Wrestling Observer with Andrew Zarian. I may show up. What? I may show up. Oh, my. Maybe I'll do a little run. It's a Christmas miracle, everybody. There you go. There you go. Uh, <laughs> no, but seriously, this has been a great year. I've had a blast with you guys doing this every week or close every week, depending on uh, my, my health. If I fractured something or I broke something or I got, you know, sick for the 18th time this year. Uh, it's been a blast and I and I look forward to doing it next year. It's wild. Wild stuff, man. Let's talk about some of the best stuff in 2022. Next week, we'll do the worst of 2022, right? Because I think we need to do yeah. that. But there was a lot of positive here. And a lot of people got propelled into key positioning. Um Obviously, that the second half, actually, the year started off with a negative for AEW, but the second half of the year was more negative than positive for AEW. Between the suspensions, 
Yeah. Uh, you know, something that got overlooked was the Jeff Hardy situation, which we'll go into next week. But let's talk about some of the best moments for both companies. Uh, the year started off with Rumble, and that was the big focus for on the WWE side. I don't think people envisioned a Vince McMahon-less company, but we ended up there. What were your, some of your top moments, Matt, that you had? Um, I, I did love the Rumble. Um, this year's WrestleMania, for me, uh, on the WWE side, felt like, even though it was two nights, it's still an adjustment for me for those multi-night shows. But what worked for me was just Mania on night one and night two were just so fun. And it felt like we were witnessing a big WrestleMania. The last couple of years, even pre-pandemic, it didn't have that resonating feeling with me. Um, one of my favorite things... Oh, go ahead, Andrew. No, what what match stood out to you for WrestleMania? Because I have a theory about WrestleMania this year. Well, what, what's your theory? I, I, it wasn't a specific match that made it. It was just the spectacle of it. It, it really Th felt exactly like an event. Yeah. Like, you know what stands out to me? The jackass match, which the I I, match, I went yeah. in there hating the concept, and then I got it. I was like, oh, you know what? This was a lot of fun, right? And at the end of the day, that's what WrestleMania is for. I Cody, obviously, big moment mm -hmm. also, but it was the moments, not the actual in-ring, that told the story yeah. of this year's WrestleMania. And they had a lot of big Even moments. Even though... Yeah, even though Roman and Brock was a great main event. Yeah. And Rollins and uh, Cody was a great match. Like, those were great matches. It's Pat McAfee and Austin Theory. It's Austin. Steve Austin and Kevin Owens. Yeah. Like, that's how we started 2022. Steve Austin came back, but it's buried in such a weird news cycle. Like, the first six months of 2022 yeah. felt on pace to be one of the biggest and best years in pro wrestling in quite some time. Oh, absolutely, 100%. Then, then the summer hit, and it turned into the biggest transitional year in pro wrestling since 1996, in my opinion, or 2002. Because when you take a look at how everything broke down in the, let's say, the third quarter of 2022 for you fancy business types out there, it was dealing with, the Vince McMahon fallout, the double or nothing fallout, all of these things, and also just injuries on both sides really hampered a lot of what we were going to see. Like the first half of 2022, the positivity across the board in the business for Very high. just straight up enjoyment was high. And now we're starting to get a bit of that back heading into 2023. But I think you have to look at the final six months of the year as a transition period across the industry. What was a match that stood out for you on the WWE side? Because I got, I got um, new, I mean, I, the list could go on and on for AEW yeah. for me, but on the WWE side, they had some really, you know, we, we did see the, the, the style change between the two companies. I think it was very mm -hmm. evident this year, the difference in WWE style of wrestling and what AEW does and what everybody else does. You know, WWE is its own thing. What were some of the WWE moments for you, the best matches? Uh, Sheamus and Gunther at Clash at the Castle stood out. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was that was a great match. That whole pay per view, I'm sorry, premium live event. Don't come after me. Um, was one of the standout WWE pay per views where it was so predicated on match quality. It felt like a WCW pay per view in the mid '90s because you had the big money making title fight, but all the other matches had a different edge to them and it showcased different personalities and different styles. And I think that gave a, a lot of WWE fans or just a lot of wrestling fans across the board, a lot of faith in the triple H era that we're yeah. currently in. But I think some things have happened along the way to create some bumps and you're starting to see a lot more negative sentiment on some of the decision-making, but it's difficult to completely change the culture of a company in one felt swoop. But that's that's the tipping point for me to where there's hope that this will be a different WWE for fans who have been craving something different from the company for quite a long time. You know, Sheamus and Gunther, uh, some people say that that was probably one of the best, probably could have been the best match of the year for that company. I, I would I would put it in conversation for that. It, it definitely I in think. conversation. But, you know, it was such a big, big year. You know what was a great match that n and nobody was talking about it by, by the second half of the year? Roman and Seth. At Royal Rumble. Yeah. Nobody remembers that. that. Nobody great. talks about it. And that was a great match. Th th that's the thing that is... It's a blessing and a curse right now to be a wrestling fan because there's so much content out there. 
But because there's so much content out there, it really makes it hard to remember the really good matches. Yeah. Because we're starting to get a lot of really good matches, but just fatigue of the amount of wrestling we've seen over 200 hours of national television dedicated to pro wrestling this year. Yeah. Across Raw, SmackDown, Dynamite, Rampage, Impact, just so much programming that it's hard to really remember so many things. That's why you remember the flashpoints, then the nitty gritty stuff. And it also could be a generational thing too. I think so. Uh, you know, when you look at when you look at the best matches on the AEW side, uh, which we'll go into in a little bit, but you know, they they created a lot of top people this year. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was a transition year for them by creating new stars. The acclaim comes to mind. Obviously, we'll talk about this, but uh, AEW story was the necessity to create new stars. WWE's situation was who do we have and where are we putting them. You know, it, they didn't really create a new star in that company. It was the same people, but the dominance of Roman Reigns told the story for that company. That was the story, top to bottom, both pro programs, you know, Raw and SmackDown. It was the Roman Reigns show, and they had to do it. Which, when we get back from break, I want to talk about this because between the two companies, I'll go into, you know, the AEW side, obviously, we'll talk into the, the best matches and what they did because they had a, they had a bunch of them. Uh, I mean, it, it was dynamite had fantastic, you know, top tier matches. The pay-per-views obviously had it, but we're going to go into this. Uh, I want you to think about it, Matt. And I also want you guys to think about this and tweet us. You can tweet me at Andrew Zanian and let me know what you think. What was the best WWE match of the year? What was the best AEW match of the year? And what was the, what was an indie match or, or a non major top two match wrestling observer live here on sports byline. We'll be right back right after this. Wrestling Observer Live Christmas Edition. Andrew Zarian here, joined by Matt Ryan. We're doing our best of 2022. Some matches here. Look at this. I got a little list here. Ooh. Let's go into this. Cody versus Seth, Hell in a Cell. Great match. Right? Love that match. Okay. On the AEW side, Death Triangle versus the Elite at Full Gear. Fantastic match. You also had I was FTR. There for that. It was really you were, yeah. FTR yeah. against the Briscoes. Super card of honor, great match. The two out of three pinfall at Death Before This Honor, great match. Here's another FTR match. FTR versus, uh, who was this with? Uh, oh, New Japan Aussie Royal Open. Quest. Yes, it was Aussie Open. There you go. New Japan Royal Quest 2, day one. Gunther Sheamus, a lot of people love that. That was a really good card, by the way. That show was good. Uh, JAS versus Danielson, Kingston, Moxley, Ortiz, Santana, and the Anarchy in the Arena match. A double or nothing, 2022. The Briscoes and FTR again in the double. That, by the way, that double dog collar match we're, we'll go into. Okada and Will Ospreay, Wrestle Kingdom. You know what? That, he, there was so much happening. That kind of got overshadowed, didn't it? Yeah, that's the, and I talked about this in the last segment. There's been so much this year. And with the rise of just the overall amount of wrestling content, Back in WW in the Monday Night Wars, yeah, there were four shows a week at one point, but it was just two major companies, three if you count ECW. It's just so much access to content now, past, yeah. present, and you know the future, like the independents. You've got so much out there now that it makes it hard for people like us who do nothing but ingest wrestling all day because we have nothing else in our lives that gives us any value. Um, I'm a sad I, I, true, man. very true, very true. <laughs> Keith, listen, Keith Lee. Here's another one. Keith Lee, Swerve Strickland versus the acclaimed at All Out. The the crowd was nuts for this. Yeah. Roman Reigns, Brock Lesnar, Last Man Standing match, SummerSlam. Roman and Logan Paul, uh, underrated for sure. This came out of nowhere and it was a great match. Very much liked it. Sammy Sammy Guevara and versus Cody in that ladder match to begin uh, the year. Spring Beach Break in January. Shingo yeah, and Will Ospreay, the Usos and the Street Profits, Will Ospreay and Orange Cassidy, a Forbidden Door. I mean, this list goes on and on, but let's talk about the AEW side of things because mm -hmm. a match that kind of was not on this list, and I and I think it should be, was that was that dog collar match with MJF. I I completely agree, and I'm gonna say something here. Yeah, that seems antithetical to our ilk. Yeah. 
These are all great matches, but why can't we remember them? Why do we only remember a select few? It's because the angles drew the money. The promos, the hype, the setups. Those were the things that got us interested. Why do we remember Cody versus Seth? Because of everything going into that match. Yeah. Why are we talking about Sheamus and Gunther? Because it was such a moment. Sheamus and Gunther in the UK, both of them getting their breaks in, in Europe, primarily in the United Kingdom. Sheamus in front of, you know, pseudo countrymen. There were a great amount of Irish people there as well. And this was a proving point for Sheamus to prove that he could still go as he heads into his 40s, dealing with all the issues he's had. And he's a guy that rehabbed his that. career for sure. He rehabbed his totally. image. I mean, do you remember people? Pe I mean, even a couple of years ago, people didn't want to see Sheamus. They had no interest in Sheamus. They said he was dangerous and he was hurting people and he wasn't a good uh, partner to have and all this stuff. And all of a sudden now, you know, people are into him again. It's it just shows you you could reinvent yourself over and over again. I I think the 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 Briscoes and FTR FTR was a tag team of the year for sure. I I would yeah. give them tag team of the year. Uh, the Usos are a second. Acclaimed, I would put as third on that mm -hmm. list for sure. Uh, top guys, you know, let's talk about the men's side. Who was who was the guy this year? It's Roman Reigns. Roman for like, sure. John Moxley. Roman Moxley, Seth Rollins, Cody Rhodes. Uh, when you take a look at AEW, MJF became a top guy. CM Punk. Um... You can have your opinions on Punk, the positive and the negative, but you can't take away, and Andrew, I think you agree with this too, the value and importance he had to AEW in the positive and the negative this year Yeah, put him, I would say, right underneath Roman Reigns as most important wrestlers of 2022. I think the Punk story is going to be something that is discussed for many, many years. Uh, in and out of AEW, it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, and I, and also his next move is really going to solidify what, what his legacy is. This was supposed to solidify his legacy, right? And I think he did a very good job the times that he was available. He obviously got hurt. When did they, when did they do this double, the, the dog collar match? When was this? It was at that his, was revolution. Early. Yeah, it was, it was, it started off the year. It started off the year. Yeah. So it was February. So this was the February show. He, yeah. you know, he came out to his old theme, his Ring of Honor theme. He had the shorts. I mean, I thought the presentation was great and the story made sense. Again, it was the story that, that stuck. You know, we're going to talk about this for a long time. But where do you, you know, what did they do next year? I think that's a discussion we're going to have for, for a while now. But men, the men's wrestler of the year, who was it for you? It's got, it's Roman. Like, it there's has no, to be him. Yeah, I know a lot of people don't want to no hear that, but. I, you know, I don't care. He's <laughs> become the biggest draw of anyone on the regular roster in the business. You take a look at the impact. SmackDown's the A show because Roman Reigns is on it. And also it helps that it's on Fox. Yeah. But when you look at how 2022 played out, there was no one who could move. The, and I, I hate doing the t-shirt thing. And I, yeah. Needle move or whatever. How's my guy? There's no more valuable personality in WWE than Roman Reigns right now. The two most valuable wrestlers in pro wrestling are CM Punk and Roman Reigns. Yeah. Not yeah, because absolutely. of their match quality, but because Roman Reigns can sell out a stadium. Not many people who work on TV consistently can sell out a stadium. Yeah. Is there anybody right now in the business who is working? Not not Austin, not The Rock, not these hypotheticals, but empirically that could sell out a stadium week to week. That could sell out a stadium with a main event. Yeah, uh, Roman's Roman's dancing partner would have to be you know who, who's he tangoing with? Yeah, that, but, that plays but a big part. But yeah, but you're, I get. I know what B you mean. The B side it, is strong yeah. enough. Yeah, it, it's Roman. It's uh, and it's I would say the most most. The men's wrestlers are probably Roman and and Punk for the other side, but like you know, there's a discussion to be had. MVP, John Moxley. Yeah, I, I can I can concede John Moxley because John Moxley this year proved how valuable he was inside and outside the ring. He is Listen, a leader Jericho in the too. locker. 
Yeah. Yeah, I, you, those guys are definitely in the discussion. You you take a look at Mox. He saved AEW more times than anyone. He has been the cornerstone, the rock of that company since he showed up. And 2022 just made it apparent. Um, all the stuff with Danielson, um, to me, that felt like a main event on a show where they weren't the main event. Yeah. Um, his multiple title reigns this year, he is a draw. He is a draw in this business, and he is one of the most valuable assets in the industry. But for me, it, it, it's those three guys. It's Punk, it's Roman, and it's Mox, and they're all almost at the same level for a variety of reasons. Yeah, very. I mean, very interesting. I see on Punk. I listen. If the if the Punk situ- thing that had not happened, we would be having a very dis- different discussion right now as far as. Who was the guy this year? Yeah. I, I think the discussion would have been very different if we didn't have a punk injury after winning the title and then the, the second incident that happened. Uh, we would be having a very different conversation about the year because guess what? He would have had a match with Tanahashi, right? Yeah. Boy, would would that have been a story? Punk against Tanahashi. Uh, all the lead up to the MJF punk feud for the belt. There's so many what if scenarios from this year that it makes it hard to really grade this year on a flat level. You can't grade 2022 on anything but a curve because of everything that happened. What was what was like, your favorite there was AEW no match? Stasis. What was your favorite uh, AEW match? Punk Max Dog Collar. That was the one for you? That was the one. That was the one for me. Um there were a lot of great matches in the second half of 2022 but that one is the one that uh, anarchy in the arena also uh and the the blood and guts match those were the three biggest matches of the year to me or my favorites of the year because they resonated with me outside of the fact that they were good matches also the iconic image of eddie kingston covered in blood with a gas can how do you not use that in every video package for the rest of time? Oh, if yeah. If they ever do a yeah, Lonely Vermont. Road of Faith video for AEW, <laughs> that's got to be in there. Yeah, very, very cool stuff. Uh, you know, I, I, as far as wrestling went, I think it was a good year for wrestling. The the, the in-ring was solid, uh, and, and it, it's only getting better, you know, on the WWE side with changes happening. Uh, I would, how about on the women's side? Who was the wrestler of the year for you? Bianca, for sure. You're muted again. I don't know why. I can't hear a word you're saying. There you go. Oh, yep. Sasha there Banks. Yeah, Sasha Banks, Bianca Belair, uh, Bailey's come. Bailey's return really turned things around in the second half of the year. Uh, when you look at the AEW side, Britt Baker, obviously. Uh, I said Sasha Banks because, to me, it's the same situation as Punk in the fact that wherever she was going to land or however the situation was going to play out had massive ripple effects. And we're seeing that play out now with her going to New Japan, a lot of the rumors of her being Soraya's partner, but it's it comes down to the heavies. It's Bianca, it's Britt Baker. The, they carried their respective divisions over yeah. the course of 2022. And for Bianca, she had to do it for a long stretch of time without Bailey, without Charlotte, and without Becky Lynch. And now that Becky and Bailey are back and Charlotte's probably coming back at the Rumble, maybe. I have absolutely no idea. I'm just speculating. Uh, these are things that can really prop up that those divisions, and it gave Bianca a chance to do what a lot yeah. of wrestlers couldn't do in those positions and shine. Wrestling Observer Live. We'll be right back after this. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live, Sunday edition, Christmas edition. Merry Christmas, everybody. And, and Wild, throughout I'm the here. land. And throughout Dominic, the land. Dominic the Christmas Donkey is just playing in the background at Andrew's house right now as they play on a loop. Or on the floor. On loop. You have no idea. It's a very New York thing. This is our Christmas tradition. Silent Night I've, does not play here. It's Dominic the Christmas Donkey. Explaining that to people who d- never grew up listening to New York radio, CBS FM, they, they would play that song ad nauseum over and, over and trying to ex- trying to explain it to people. It's just the saddest, most New York City thing ever. It's not <laughs> bacon, egg, and cheese. It's not Ock. It's not no. the bodega. It's Dominic the Christmas donkey. Dominic the Christmas donkey. It's a, it's a huge tradition here. The kids love it. The kids love that donkey. 
Let's talk about best promotion. Talk about loving things. Uh, obviously, your pick is XPW this year, right? The return of, of course, XPW. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I knew that that would be the pick. <laughs> uh, no, it's not, actually not for knocking, the thirtieth year them. running. Not knocking it's them. The, it's actually, Andrew, for the 30th year running the Universal Wrestling Federation, Herbo Turbo, doing it again from beyond the grave. Is that what's happening? <laughs> UWF <laughs> there, is back? There was someone a couple of years ago claiming to be Herb Abrams Jr. And ran is this real? UW yes. Hey, these, this is something that actually oh, happened. These, yeah, I'm into this. Uh, this is something that actually happened where there was a promoter underneath a hood calling themselves Herb Abrams Jr., promoting uwf shows in some backwater town in florida yikes and it like 20 people would show up it was the same logo i think they made the same belt it was why out of all the out of all the identities you could lie about right and out of all the promotions you could use illegally as your intellectual property why is uwf the bad uwf the one because they would think, oh, it's going to pop the internet, brother. Like the wrestling marks and the Twitter smarks. And Nobody knows. This. Yeah, the, the only the thing th they're known for is that they convinced Bruno, that poor man, to go there and do commentary. And this man lost his mind in the New Yorker <laughs> and, and was found covered in illicit <laughs> drugs and, and Vaseline. That's the legacy of that company. Wild stuff. Best promotion, also, WWE. The Are you going with WWE on this? <sighs> I know oh, it's rough. Man. It, it, I'm gonna cop out and say Catalyst Wrestling because I just oh, want to debate God. the topic. <laughs> no, no, no. You need to pick. You need to pick. Is it um, AEW or is it is it WWE as the best promotion? I think year? heading in the heading in the June, it was AEW by a fairly decent margin, but the Roman Reigns, Sami Zayn angle. Uh, the slow rebrand of SmackDown into a work rate show. Um, Austin coming back, you know, Kevin Owens getting a sizable push upon return. Like, there's so many things from this year that split it. And, and it's WWE by a hair because of everything within context happening to AEW. AEW could justifiably be promotion of the year, but injuries and having to f hard reset four times in I'm one gonna, year. I'm going to say match-wise, as far as like in-ring goes, I would go with AEW. Yes. Uh, I, I think, I'm not counting, again, this is not a financial thing. I'm not counting the financials, who, who drew bigger houses. Obviously, we know it's WWE. We know that they are the bigger promotion here. But if we're looking in-ring, I would go with AEW. Still, but overall optics go, it has to be WWE because of the the optimistic changeover. Yeah. In the company. The, and the, this year was the not really ahead. the story of that, right? We got yeah. some of that, but the big story is this year. 2023 coming up. Yeah, 2023 is going this year feels like a wash because of the second half of the year because of the just the seismic effect it had on both companies. You know, the punk incident, Vince, uh, different resets within both companies. The purchase of ROH is something that had a huge effect on 2022 for huge. AEW. In a good way or and a bad way? Positive or negative way? I'd say th there's an argument for both. I don't mean to be both sides Jones here. No, but no, no, I got it. ROH. ROH was such an effective tool to help get FTR over as the best tag team in the industry without getting in the way of them involving being involved in the top AEW world tag title scene. You were able to treat them as the number one tag team in the business without them having your championship, which was a huge bonus, I think, in the Ring of Honor purchase. Um, it gave them access to content and to build off of stories that they may not have been able to if they made that if they didn't make that purchase. Um, it allows for AEW to have a more diverse roster without having to have the same guys every week. And there's, you know, all the other stuff that make the major, per that goes back to the UWF purchase of Jim by Jim Crockett Promotions. When you have a wealth of content and a wealth of a roster and you have only one person booking it, you're going to get lost and so you're going to get lost and things are going to be overvalued and underappreciated and you're going to run into all this and both companies still have a major bottleneck issue 
the end, I know Lance Storm disagrees with me, disagreed with me. The 2001 WWF post-invasion roster is one of the deepest in the history of the business. But within the last 20 years, the embarrassment of talent on all w, every WWE roster, every Ring of Honor AEW roster, there's a bottleneck because all of the top talent in the world, for the, with exception, are there. And you can only have one top male act. You can only have one top female act per, sh per brand. And there's a lot of people who make the argument for both. And how do you balance that? How do you structure that? How do you create a situation to where you can level people in and out without politics, without, you know, trying to use ad sales or, pol you know, own implicit bias? Booking that amount of talent and trying to find a place for everyone is a kamikaze task because you're going to crash at some point. It's yeah. just a matter of if and a matter of when. And pardon me, a matter of when and a matter of how. Because we saw it play out in both companies. Yeah, we when, did. Yeah. And with the uh, Ring of Honor title and the importance of that, when you have so much talent and you have so much personality driving your product, how do you, where do you find the rotation point? How do you book it? How do you make it fresh and engaging, but you still are keep using the same talent in somewhat of the same way? I, I think AEW have... has an advantage that we're keeping it fresh, and it, and it has to do with the fact that they they're a three year old product, right? Uh, yeah. Roman versus Seth Rollins should be a big deal, but we've seen it for ten years to some. I mean, less than ten years, right? Five years, six years, seven, whatever. Seven, seven years. Okay, close enough. It it loses the value. You're absolutely right. Yeah, uh, and so, when you take a when you look at headed to twenty twenty three, we're seeing a soft reset in both companies. But uh, what happens in the first three months is going to decide. And, and I'm saying this now, yeah. looking back at twenty twenty two and like, oh, I can make that determination in March or April. I know I'm going to be wrong, and uh, we're going to have receipts on this, but that's going to set up. Who's going to have the best final six months of the year? The first yeah. real four, first quarter of the year is really going to set the pace and the tone. I, 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 I'm I, still leaning towards AEW having the better wrestling promotion, for sure. Uh, I enjoyed more AEW than I did WWE this year. But the second half of WWE, I agree with you, was much better. Uh But a lot of it has to do with some of that, you know, it's in our head and we think it's much better because it's not Vince McMahon. But, you know, we did see Austin show up at WrestleMania, so that was something something great. Let's look at breakout stars here really quickly, right? Because there was a number of these. Uh, I have a list here. I don't know who created this list, but I, I agree with some of them. I don't agree with a lot of them. Um, Austin Theory for WWE was definitely a breakout star, and I think the second, this new version of him is a better uh, understanding of where the character is going. Him being, yeah. you know, Vince McMahon's ch son, a d new son after Shane got booted from... <laughs> Royal Rumble. That's never worked, by the way. Ah, you're Vince my new McMahon's boy. Cho yeah, you're my new Vince boy. Vince McMahon's chosen flunky or whatever. There's only It's only worked once, and it worked with The Rock ever since then. Drew but McIntyre that was very didn't work. But that was a yeah. very short. But you know like why it worked? Months? You know why it worked? It piggybacked on Montreal. It piggybacked on Montreal yeah. and the heat that Vince was getting from it. So it worked. Austin Theory for WWE, Cora Jade, NXT, I agree with that. Dante Martin for sure for AEW. Darby had a great year, but I think I don't I don't think he was the breakout, breakout this star. year. Yeah, I don't think no. he was a breakout. Uh Dax Harwood. Not Hardwood. As a act, Harwood yeah. as a single, I thought was really good. MG wrote, keeps writing Hardwood for his name. And I keep reading it because I'm well, like Anchorman. I have to read what's like on. that. Yeah. With a mustache like that, how are you not Dax Hardwood? How are you, how at are some you point? not? Jamie Hayter, for sure, yeah, breakout star. Definitely. I think Jamie's rise the le the last couple months has been astronomical. Uh, Takeshita, Takeshita, I can't say it. Takeshka. Take <laughs> Thank you. Uh, sorry. It's been a long day here. It's Christmas. You got to forgive me. Uh, Just he, remember you know, in your head, yes. ta, ta, Kesha. Ta. But if it was, but Kesha dressed up as Franz Kafka. Solves it right there. Thank you. Liv Morgan for WWE. <laughs> Ali, yeah. Mustafa Ali got a revamp here. Ricky Starks for sure for AEW. Yeah. For AEW. 
I'm loving this, Ricky. Uh, Roxanne Perez in NXT. I think her story is going to be 2023. Sami Zayn, 100% for WWE. He broke out this year. He's the top guy now. He's un uh, he's unequivocally you know a top guy. And good for him. And, and mm -hmm. good for him because he's a guy. He's a he's he's traveled this freaking world and, and done everything he could possibly do in wrestling. And now he is a top act in the business. And a guy like Sami Zayn, you know what? Would you have hand selected him to be in that top program? Most likely not. But his his personality and his perseverance got him there. The acclaimed tag team of the year, breakout tag team of the year, Wardlow. Uh, yeah. I would have said the first half. Not the second mm -hmm. half. Wheeler, but I, there's Yuta. a revitalization happening. Him and Samoa Joe. Let's see what happens. I, and I would go with Wheeler Yuta to me. Also, you know oh. what that Joe that Joe uh, Wardlow feud reminds me of? What? A little bit like Vader and Sting because of Joe calling himself the King of Cable. He is and, the King uh, of Cable. The King now. of Cable tournament. Yeah. Yes. King All of hail the King. And also Wesley's on here. I don't know mm, if I agree yeah. with that. Possibly. Yeah. You know what, what about Possibly. uh? Oh, oh, I can't remember his name right now from NXT. I want you to think um, about it because we're going to go to a quick break here. Yeah. Wrestling Observer Live Christmas Edition. We'll be back right after this. Wrestling Observer Live here on Christmas evening. What did you have? Did you did you have a big dinner, Matt? Oh, uh, yeah. We have a Christmas night dinner. We celebrate Christmas not, uh, Christmas Day, uh, not Christmas Eve, um, because we were shanty Irish people, um, and we didn't do Christmas Eve. But uh, yeah, big dinner, uh, some short, some braised short ribs. Oh, it was beautiful. a very fantastical time. Beautiful. I'm still. Uh, the people are still here. Nobody's leaving my house. Is the Muay Thai fight still going on, or the is Thai, it now the dance competition? Aunt Lisa just gigged. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> All right, Aunt Lisa just gigged. Uh, <laughs> Nana and Poppy had a, Nana turned on Poppy and, and, oh, no. and yeah, yeah. The chair, there was a chair shot here. It's a whole scenario. I don't know. I've lost control of this party here. And you know what uh, she did? She you, was smart when she gigged. She did right in the hairline. Right on the hairline. Was it yeah. noticeable though? Like, was no, it no, one no. of those like jab, 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 jab? No, 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 no. Nobody saw it. Everybody was shocked. It was a total crimson mask and it was shocked. I, <laughs> Cousin Tommy's very upset with her. But Can I just point out how absurd this conversation is? And we're actually, like, we're on the radio. We're on national people radio. People on Listen, Christmas are thing. making the... People on Christmas Day are rescuing their families to listen to <laughs> us two idiots. Yeah, fantasy book, my, my family getting into a brawl. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we do, guys. This is, this is the show. Guys, uh, I had a great time here with you guys. Uh, I'm looking forward to next year. Next show, 2023. This was the last show of the year for us here. Uh, we're going to be back on Sunday next week with the things that we disliked in 2022, the worst of, and and some. I'll, I'll do some of my predictions for the year. How about Ooh. that? We'll do that too. Yeah, we'll do some of our predictions here. But Matt, thank you for joining me once thank again you. on the show. Love having you on. Guys, love doing this with you guys each and every week, and we'll see you all next time. Take care.